I'm Ben Newman, and I am fired up to be with you for round one of this Abstract Sales Academy. I am so excited to be with each and every single one of you from coast to coast, to dig down deep, to not only get fired up, but to focus on your passion, your drive, and going to the next level, not only for your companies, but for you in your lives, personally and professionally. We'll be together every single month. We're gonna go round one through round 12 to work on proven mental training tools, sales techniques, and philosophies from research and hundreds of books that I've written so that you don't have to read them. Now, a couple of things I do wanna get out of the way before we really dive in and get started because they're not mentioned in any bios. Bios typically are just highlights. I wanna share with each and every single one of you, I have been shaken to the core personally in my life. I have been shaken to the core professionally in my life. But those times I've been knocked down, it's what I've learned from mentors and coaches and teachers that have been in my life that gave me the courage, the passion to get back up off that mat of life to keep going. Because our success will always be measured in our ability to get back up one more time than we've been knocked down. One other thing that's also mentioned, or not mentioned in the bio, is the fact that I'm a very emotional guy. I cry every time I watch Extreme Home Makeovers. So I'll be transparent with you. I'll be real with you. I'm going to share my heart and my fire for you on your journey to success. And then lastly, I tend to be a little impatient. That's why I already gave all of you in an email a free copy of one of our latest books, Your Mental Toughness Playbook. So let's dive right in. And let's talk about something that I believe can be the difference for you. And it starts with your thinking. You see, your success is not just about changing your habits, it's about changing the way that you think. We'll talk about vision, personal goals, professional goals. Your company, your organization has personal and professional goals. But what I want to focus on with you, and you'll see consistency month by month with this concept, is identifying your passion for the process of what you do rather than holding on too tightly to results that you can't control. It doesn't mean we don't have goals. What it means is once we set our goals and we cast them up onto that canvas of our imagination, we have a willingness to put them down, put it right in front of our face, and to be relentless, and to be intentional, and to follow through on the work, the daily habits, the daily disciplines it takes to drive success. So let's start with a story that really speaks to this concept of process. I received a phone call last season from the St. Louis Cardinals organization. And the front office called as a result of my work with the organization and they said, would you like to throw out the first pitch at Bush Stadium July 9th against the Houston Astros? Now I'm a St. Louis born kid, so I was like a kid in the candy store. I immediately said, yes, I can't wait to be there. I will be there. I'm going to throw out that first pitch. It's going to be an incredible time. I hung up the telephone, and then I thought to myself, what have I done? Two things came to mind. Number one, I hadn't thrown a baseball since eighth grade. And then the second thing that came into my mind was, how far is it from home plate to the pitcher's mound? So I take out my phone, the Google world that we live in, and I Google, how far is it from home plate to the pitcher's mound? 60 feet, 6 inches. And I thought, holy cow, that is far. So the goal became, I just have to hit the mitt. So what did I have to do? Once I set the goal, I had to identify the process. Having not thrown a baseball since 8th grade, I had to go in the backyard, walk off 60 feet 6 inches, and start practicing. So that's exactly what I did. I walked out into the yard, hit that fence, walked off that 60 feet 6 inches. I turned and I looked at that fence and thought, wow, this, this, this is really far. Now I was going to have to do this in front of 40,000 people. I don't get that nervous anymore. I've had the opportunity to share the stage after Tony Dungy, Super Bowl champion head coach, in front of 12,000 people, so I can keep my nerves together. But thinking about this, I was nervous. So I got my two children, Isaac and Kennedy, I brought them outside, and that was how I simulated the start. You gotta start somewhere, right? And then I picked up my daughter's pink Hello Kitty baseball. 
And I started firing that ball against the fence, firing that ball against the fence, firing that ball against the fence. And I started to hit the fence. I started to build my confidence. You see, all I focused on was the process. It was the daily habit that I would have to create to practice to throw that baseball. So let's take a look at you in your professional life. Or you can utilize an example in your personal life. Go back to a period of time, let's use sales, where you were selling at your highest level. You were locked in, you were confident, you were in your ideal state. Go right back to that moment. You were believing in yourself at the highest level. What did your daily behaviors look like? Were you focused on results or were you focused on the process? What did those daily behaviors look like? And what if you repeated those behaviors from that ideal state over and over and over again? So I continued to practice leading up to game day. Game day came, I'm driving down to Bush Stadium. Leading up to game day, I had received text message, emails from individuals in the Cardinals organization saying, don't throw a dribbler. You better make it to the plate. And I'm thinking, I work with professional athletes on mental toughness, and you're trying to get into my head. So I walk all the way down to the gate to step onto Bush Stadium grounds. And before I do, they pass me a brand new white, unused Major League Baseball. They call it a pearl. So they pass me this pearl, and I start working it into my hands, working it into my hands. And then I step on to Bush Stadium grounds. Now, for some of you who have watched, the 11-time world champion St. Louis Cardinals play, you know that it looks like dirt on that field. But when you win 11 world championships, dirt is not good enough. It's actually crushed red brick. So I step onto that field. I start working my feet into that crushed red brick. I've got my pearl. I'm working it into my hands. They call my name. I walk out to the mound. I look down into the catcher's mitt. Big deep breath, I wind up, throw the ball, and boom, it hits the mitt. It was the most perfect 40 mile an hour changeup you've ever seen in your life. But I hit the mitt, that was the goal. So now, I'm walking off the mound, and I look over to the left, and that's where the Cardinals dugout is. And it's right before the game, so there's all this media personnel, and there's my buddy, Mike Matheny peeking his head out in between two media personnel, he gives me a thumbs up and he waves. And I immediately think to myself, this is getting too good to be true. Mike Matheny thinks I've got the stuff. I'm gonna go pitch for the St. Louis Cardinals. Now what do we know? We know that none of you have ever seen me in a Cardinals uniform. But what I thought about in that moment in time applies to you and your thinking for your life. You see, I thought, what if I was going to go pitch for the St. Louis Cardinals? What if this would be the last video I ever do? Then right now, in this moment, I better give you everything that I've got. I better give you my fire, my conviction, my passion, give you everything that I've got with this opportunity that we have together. So the question I then have for you is what if you made the conscious choice to live your life that exact same way? What would your life look like what would your company's growth look like? To get to the next level of sales, to grow your company, we have to understand why you want to grow the company. We have to understand the process that will drive growth. Now what I know some of you might be thinking right now is you have got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. The motivational, inspirational guy, of course he's going to tell me, give me everything that you've got. Doesn't he understand that life happens? Doesn't he understand in my career, personally, I face adversity, I face challenge? You better believe that I do. I shared with you, I have been shaken to the core, personally, in my life. I've been shaken to the core, professionally, in my life. So in preparing for our time together today, I said, can I find a story? Can I find a story that would resonate with these incredible companies from coast to coast as they drive success to the next level? Can I find a story that would speak to adversity and challenge and getting up off that mat of life? So I did some research and I found a story. This story takes us back to 1983, St. Louis, Missouri. It's about a woman named Janet. Now Janet was a single mother 
divorced when her youngest son was six months old. Janet was also a teacher. Janet was one of those teachers. Maybe you had a teacher like Janet. When she walked into the room, she had energy that went for days. Long brown hair, big pearly white eyes, a big smile. She had a passion and fire for life. Her students loved her. Her children loved her. And in 1983, Janet was diagnosed with a rare muscle disease called amyloidosis. Janet was in for the fight of her life. For those of you that don't know what amyloidosis is, each and every one of you in your muscles, you have amyloids. If you have an excess of amyloids, you would have a disease called amyloidosis, and the amyloids would slowly eat away at your muscles. There were only two hospitals in the United States treating the disease at the time of her diagnosis. The Mayo Clinic in Minnesota and the Boston Medical Center. For some reason, Janet chose Boston. Janet gets on a plane, she flies to Boston, she meets with a doctor by the name of Dr. Martha Skinner. And Dr. Skinner proceeded to tell Janet, you are only the second woman under 40 years old I have ever seen or heard of having this disease. You have two to four years to live. We were talking about the rarest of the rare. How would you respond? Janet decided to take out an old blue mead notebook. Maybe like you used to have in school. Maybe yours was a different color. And Janet decided to unleash her positive mental attitude onto the pages of this notebook that became a journal. She would write, beat the statistics, beat the odds, live with the disease that is chronic and fatal, believe in yourself, combat anything, purpose in life. Janet was committed to her purpose, to continue to lead her boys no matter how much pain she faced. When you understand your purpose, it will overtake any pain, any adversity, any challenge you face. Janet would go back to St. Louis. She would continue to receive treatments. Her youngest son remembers when 24-hour nursing care came into their home and removed all of the belongings from her TV room. And then she had her bedroom behind the TV room, removed all the belongings from the TV room, and it turned into a 24-hour nursing center. Yet every single night without fail, Janet would stand outside of that TV room, now a hospital room. She would look down that long hallway with her IV stand in tow, whether it took one nurse or two nurses, Janet would walk down that long hallway because she knew that it led to the dining room table. And Janet would sit at the head of that dining room table and she would pan over to the right and look at her oldest son, Drew. And she would say, Drew, how was your day at school? She would then pan across the table to the left. And she would look me dead square in the eyes and say, honey, how was your day at school? You see, the story I'm sharing with you is the story of my life. My mother, Janet Fishman Newman, is the greatest prize fighter of life. I have ever known. On November 2nd, 1986, my mother took the pen of her journal and she passed it on to my brother and I to give us the opportunity to continue to write the story of her legacy. In our time together, rounds 1 through 12, what fires me up is the opportunity to be with you as I pass you a proverbial pen to get focused on your purpose your commitments in your life, your goals, your vision, as you write the story of your legacy. Now today in our first round, you may be surprised, we're not even going to talk about sales language. Why? Because in order to sell, we have to understand the reason why you want to sell more. We have to dig down deep with these proven mental training tools to clearly know exactly where it is that you want to go. My mother, even though she went to heaven when she passed that pen on November 2nd, 1986, my mother taught me the greatest life lesson I have ever learned from anybody. My mother shared, it is not how long you live, it is how you choose to live your life. Our work together is going to be made up of choices 
you want to make on a daily basis for your life to drive your performance. In our work with professional athletes, we always start with one of the first rules of sports psychology. Now, if you're not even a sports fan, this will apply to you. But in our work with professional athletes, the NFL, the PGA, professional baseball, athletes in the NCAA, we always start this first rule of sports psychology. It says, for an athlete to perform at their highest level, they cannot solely rely on their natural talents and abilities. They have to understand the mental toughness side of what it takes to achieve peak performance. That same rule applies to you on your journey in your life. You see, it's not just about your habits. It's about changing the way that you think. It's not just working hard. It's understanding the mental toughness. I've done research from one of the leading experts on mental toughness. I've had research done over a 10-year period of time working and coaching with individuals, finding out what makes the difference. And that's how we created the six mental training tools that you will learn on our journey together. The tools that are in your mental toughness playbook. Remember, get your free copy at freeplaybook.net if it hasn't been given to you already. Freeplaybook.net, the proven mental training tools. And it all starts with purpose. How did my mother fight through all of that pain? She remained committed to her purpose to lead my brother and I. So the first mental training tool, you'll see it on page 7 as well in your handout. It's called attaining belief in yourself. The attaining belief in yourself is a five-step process, as you'll see on that worksheet, which really tackles the truth of where you are right now. Now bear in mind, when I say attaining belief in yourself, I am in no way, shape, or form saying that you do not believe in yourself or that you haven't accomplished anything. We're simply tackling your thinking where you are right now. Based upon what you have achieved in your life, what is that next level that you can achieve? And do you believe enough in yourself to go there? Now, if you actually look on page 8, you'll see that that's where you complete the attaining belief in yourself exercise. There's personal goals and professional goals. This is how we understand exactly where it is that you want to go. So you'll see after the five steps it says to take out a piece of paper and write down all of the beliefs that you have about the person that you can become. That's what we'll do on this personal and professional worksheet. We have to understand the goals, the blueprint of where you want to go to tackle that next level of success when you take a look at the truth of where you are and where you want to go. This would be the moment in the video where you would hit the pause button. You as a team, as an individual, spend time to work on writing down those personal and professional goals. Now the next thing I want to share with you, it's another mental training tool. It's called the power to reframe. My mother exemplified the power to reframe better than any example I've ever seen. You see, my mother used to receive phone calls from the Boston Medical Center that would go something like this. Dr. Skinner, who I mentioned earlier, would call my mom and she would say, Janet, you need to come to Boston. You're going to go through a list of painful procedures. We're going to increase your medications, which were over a page long in her journal. You're going to have to wear a mask to be able to go outside. And you're going to have to wear jope stockings around your legs to be able to control the swelling. My mother would hang up the telephone and almost instantly pick it right back up and she would call her boyfriend Alan and she would say, Alan, I don't care what procedures they tell me I'll go through, how much pain I will endure. We are going to make this a family trip. We're going to have incredible memories. We will take the boys to Chinatown because they like Chinese food. We will take the kids bowling because they like candlestick bowling. What my mother was exemplifying for us and what she did, because those are the memories I have, those positive memories from those trips. My mother was teaching us what it means to reframe, to stay focused on solutions rather than problems. The most successful people, they drive their daily behaviors and they focus on solutions, not problems.
That's what my mother taught all of us with her example of how she led her life. Can the power to reframe make a difference for you? Now see you, on your workbook on page 9. Now I don't write about this in the Mental Toughness Playbook. The reason why is because this is new research. We've taken reframing to the next level. I've done some research from a doctor by the name of Carolyn Leaf. She wrote a book called Switch on Your Brain. And she talks about the process of creating automization in terms of how you respond to adversity or challenge that you face. She actually goes through a seven-step process. To help make it simpler for you as we walk through this technique of how we're going to help recalibrate your thinking, we're going to have three steps. And these three steps really speak to developing more mental toughness for you on your journey. Because mental toughness may just be the difference for you to get to the next level. You see, each and every one of us in our brains, we have what's called an insular cortex. It's the part of your brain that brings in everything from the outside. You also have what's called a medial prefrontal cortex. It's the part of your brain that determines how you choose to respond to the adversity, the challenge, or the positive things that happen. When I say the power to reframe, very simple. Stay focused on solutions rather than problems. Right? The easy example would be somebody is on the sales call with you and the person says, I'm not interested. Lose my phone number. You hang up the telephone, you have a choice. You can walk around the office and tell everybody how it's terrible what happened to you and had this phone call and can you believe this person said this to me? Or you can choose to take a look at your pipeline, at your phone list. Go make something positive happen immediately. Have you done that before? How did you feel? Didn't you feel great knowing that you stared adversity in the eyes and you just stayed focused on the daily disciplines? That's what reframing is all about. But to really recalibrate your thinking and create automization of your brain, you'll see on page 9 it says the win approach. This is how you learn to win the game of your mind. Habits are created in a 21-day period of time. So can you imagine if over the next 21 days you followed this process to recalibrate your brain? The next time you face challenge or adversity, write it down. Write down what that challenge or adversity is. Second, Identify the solution. What's the solution to keep you on a path of success? And lastly, you have to have a need for action. You must take action. Many individuals can write down, this is what's frustrating me. Many individuals can write down the solution. But steps one and two don't matter if you don't follow through on what it takes, and that's action. A 21-day period of time. Imagine if you tracked your reframing. You learned to recalibrate your thinking, to create automization. What type of a difference would that make for your business, for your company, for the impact you have on other people? I have seen reframing work at the highest levels. I've seen individuals achieve extraordinary things. I've worked with undrafted free agents that have gone on to start in the NFL. One of which has a shot to play in his first Super Bowl this year. Reframing can be the difference. The win approach will take you to the next level with your thinking. It's all about developing that mental toughness. So take some time. Walk through an example of adversity you faced recently. This would be a period of time where you'll hit that pause button again. Think of a time you recently faced adversity. Write down what it was. Write down what the solution would have been. And the next time you'll know in order to drive continued success to overcome the adversity, you have to take action. Hit the pause button. Walk through one example for you. Now, the next concept I want to walk you through, now, I love this. This is one of my favorites. It's called Your Prize Fighter Day. Imagine if every single day you had the opportunity to focus on creating victories based upon your effort, your relentless effort every day rather than actual results. Would that make a difference for you? Could that be the difference 
I know periods of time where I've been behind in sales, where I felt backwards, I'd been knocked down, I'll never sell anything ever again. It was in those periods of time where I was focusing on the results, my next sale. Rather than understanding the vision but focusing on the work, your prize fighter day is your opportunity to choose the daily behaviors that you want to choose to create an ideal day so you can win every day based upon your relentless commitment to yourself, your goals, your organization, based upon your effort. How does it work? It's another three-step process. Number one, you have an opportunity to choose to do something personally every single day. So you'll see this Prize Fighter Day, there's actually a blog on page 10. And then on page 11, the blog is kind of a way to recap what we're going through together. On page 11, you'll actually see the worksheet for your prize fighter day. And then you'll actually see on page 12, there's what's called your prize fighter day morning. So the prize fighter day morning, that's the example I'll give for you on the personal side. Why do I use that as an example? Because that's one of the things that I do in the mornings, having a prize fighter day morning. One of the personal things. Now I have about four things on my personal four things on my second level, which I'll tell you about, and four things on the last level. Maybe you'll just have one to get started on your prize fighter day, but it's choosing something personal, something professional or athletic, and something of service to somebody else every single day. So on the personal, I like the prize fighter day because I like creating an environment in the mornings. A time where I wake up. Maybe you feel like you're waking up at a time where you're rushing in the morning. I used to do that. And I got tired of doing it. I got tired of saying I'm causing myself to have stress and not being prepared to mentally take on the rigors that I take on being in a sales career. What if you woke up earlier? What could you do with that time? See, many individuals, when they're looking at their next level of success, a common excuse, well, I just don't have enough time in the day. Well, let me give you an easy example. Remember, focusing on the personal. This is why I started waking up earlier, to have prize fighter day mornings, the personal component of the prize fighter day for me. Because waking up 30 minutes earlier is a substantial amount of time when you compound that over the course of a year. What if I told each and every one of you, I'm going to give you a gift. In addition to the free playbook, your mental toughness playbook that you received, I'm going to give you an extra day a month. Each and every one of you, you get an extra day for you to be successful. Would that help you with your efficiency? Would that help you drive more success in your life, personally and professionally? Well, that's what an extra 30 minutes gives you in the morning. If you were to wake up an extra 30 minutes, 30 minutes a day, five days a week, two and a half hours, times four weeks in a month is 10 hours. It's an extra day a month. Imagine if you woke up an extra hour early. It could be two days a month. Would that help drive efficiency in preparing yourself for the challenges that we face personally and professionally every day in our lives? So what's your personal example for your prize fighter day? What's one thing you can do personally every day that's a choice? It's not a result, it's a choice. You either do it or you don't. Number two, business. This is where we're gonna take you back to what I mentioned earlier. It's going back to that ideal state of time when you drove performance in your business. You were confident, nothing could stop you. What did the daily behaviors look like? Maybe it was a daily dial goal. Maybe it was 100 dials a day. Maybe it was 50 dials a day. In today's world, I actually call them points of contact. A text message, an email, a phone call. However you conduct your business, in that period of time when you were most successful, how many times did you dial the phone? Was it 100? Let's use the example as 100. Imagine if you dialed the phone 100 times a day. Forget about the results. You had your passion, your energy. When people told you, no, we're not interested, lose my number, you reframed and you stayed focused on the solution. What would happen if you followed through on that commitment to yourself every single day? You gave max effort. I know what it would do. It would pay off. We've seen with athletes as well as business professionals all over the world, from Singapore to Canada to Costa Rica, max effort pays off. Relentless behavior to the process that has previously driven success will take you to the next level. And if you really want to go to the next level, what if you identified that behavior and added a little bit? 
So what if 100 dials became 105 dials? What would that mean compounded over a year to your business? And you see that 100 dials, it's a choice. You're either going to choose to do it or to not do it. And then number three, it's what I call random acts of kindness. It's of service. That's mine. Random acts of kindness. So for you, what would your service component be? So you've got personal, you've got professional or athletic, and then you have your service. Now, one of my favorite stories, I actually work and I've coached and done a significant amount of work with a Fortune 100 financial firm in Denver. And one of their leaders, when I was preparing to go do a full mental toughness training day on site at their organization, I shared with him this concept of the prize fighter day. And we got to the service component and he said, oh my goodness, this is unbelievable. I love this. He said, as soon as we hang up this telephone, he said, I'm going to go and buy a random person their groceries. I hung up that phone. I was blown away. Go buy a random person their groceries. And that single act, which I know he followed through on because he told me, empowered and inspired me to choose random act of kindness every day, to do something for others, give away your gifts, love on other people. That individual, the one I just told you about, he embraced his prize fighter day, leading a top financial firm. He actually was also in sales. He decided to lead and sell. He went on in his organization to finish top 20 in their company. I called him to congratulate him. And I said, I can't wait to come and see you walk across the stage. This is going to be incredible. Congratulations. It's awesome. You are on fire. I said, how did you do it? And he said, thanks for being a part of making top 20 prize fighter days make it happen. Now, you see, I didn't do anything. He made the conscious choice. Just like you have a choice, would it make a difference to design your ideal day based upon your effort, to create daily wins based upon your effort, your hard work, your relentless behaviors, rather than focusing on results that you can't control? Because one thing I can't tell you is when your next great results will come, when your next big sale will come. But what we can do, and what we're doing right now, we're right in the middle of it, is we're tackling your thinking it's a change in perspective. It's about intentional behaviors. And when we can understand your thinking and develop the mental toughness, coupled with the great talents and the success you've already had in a week period of time, two weeks, two years, three years, when we couple that together, that's how we get to the next level. So yes, we're going to have fun. We're going to dive into sales language. We're going to talk about prospecting. We're going to talk about closing. We're going to talk about getting those checks. But we're starting with mental toughness because I've seen it be the difference for individuals that have achieved greatness all over the world. So what will the difference be for you? If we were to think about the greatness that lies inside of you, your ability to overcome adversity, to overcome challenge, The attaining belief in yourself exercise. <clears throat> Does that help you understand where you're going? The power to reframe. Will it help you keep going on those days when you feel like you're not going anywhere? You see, oftentimes achieving greatness, success, it's your ability to keep believing in yourself, to keep moving, even on those days when you feel like you're just not going anywhere. Creating your prize fighter day. What would that sense of victory do for you every day? And on days where you fall short, it's not failure. It's an opportunity to ask yourself the question, what can I do to improve tomorrow based upon my performance today? And then lastly, if you hit the buzz, pause button one more time, take a look at starting to formulate that ideal environment for you. Because greatness lies inside of you. How do I know that regardless of any adversity that you face, you have great strength to keep fighting? Because I recognize I've shared my heart and my mother's story and my story with you, but I recognize I am not the only individual that has a story. You've been through challenge. You've been through adversity. Keep fighting. Always believe in yourself. Get up that one more time than you've been knocked down, and you'll continue to achieve success. We're going to provide you with the mental training tools round by round, 
throughout this year to take you to the next level. These are proven techniques, proven tools, proven sales language. I'm so fired up about this opportunity to be with each and every single one of you. This is your year to go to the next level. The Abstract Sales Academy is not intentionally designed to provide you with everything that you need, coupled with the talents you already have, to drive the next level of success for you personally and professionally, and to take your organization to the next level as you write the story of your legacy. Tap into that greatness that lies inside of you. I've had dear friends of mine who have faced significant adversity, fight through that adversity to achieve success. A dear friend, John O'Leary, was burned on 99% of his body when he was nine years old, given a half a percent chance of making it through the first night. He's gone on to be one of the most sought after speakers in the world. I was able to spend time with 780 wounded warriors at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas to speak to them back in 2012. I watched two individuals receive their Purple Hearts. These are men who are driven by purpose, a purpose that's way bigger than them. For those of you that have served our country, I say thank you. It's that surrender, that example to a purpose that's way bigger than you that gives us our freedom to build our businesses and the courage to keep fighting and to understand what that looks like. One of those individuals that received the Purple Heart, his name was Officer Stockton. The commander of the army walked over and said, Officer Stockton, do you have anything you'd like to say? And passed him the microphone. Officer Stockton grabbed that microphone and he said, if I had to go back and live and fight my career in the Army the exact same way, I would. And he passed the microphone back. Have you surrendered to a purpose that's bigger than you? Do you know the purpose for what you're fighting for? I'm not talking about the amount of money that you want to make. I'm talking about the white, hot reason why that connects you to your fire, your conviction, your passion. Just like my mother provided that example for us, that when you stay focused on your purpose, you can continue to lead others no matter the pain. Who are the individuals that will be on your team this year and beyond to drive you to the next level of success, to help pick you up off that mat of life? It fires me up to know that we're together right now, that you're committed to getting to that next level. It's the books that I've read, the research I've done, the mentors I've had, the coaches I still have that have made the difference for me. It's that lifelong learning. It's that commitment to always growing. And that's what fires me up about the opportunity to be with you and with the Abstract Sales Academy. It's that opportunity to continue to grow as you write the story of your legacy. We're just ringing the bell on round one. I can't wait to be with you next month for round two. I'd ask you these couple final questions as you think about our time together today and the vision that will carry us through the rest of our time this year and beyond. Why not you and why not now? Let's go do great things together.